Love from love, hope from hope, and peace from peace. It's time for a story time. And I got two friends here, and they're celebrating. And I invite all little story time people to pull up a chair, because I got uh, my nice hat on today. Yay, nice hat. See, it even says nice hat. You probably can't read it, because I got a bright... I put my halo on, because I'm reading about God's glory. So this is my angel hat, and now... I just need my wings. No one ever told me what line to go in. I'm so tired of waiting in all these lines. Drive a tree. Got to wait in a line to get in a line. Exasperating. Lord, the word of patience is falling. This is the hour of the trial of all of flesh. Revelation 3. But he has his way in the storm. And the clouds are. But dust under his feet and this is a good story because it's a true story so kick back support this channel subscribe share because the knowledge of the Lord shall cover the earth as waters cover the sea and as grass covers the land and as beauty covers the butterfly so pass on the blessing of the dove's love and by the way, the fire of heaven is roaring, and the thunder of God is shaking the earth silly, and voices from old cry out, it is time, it is time for the love. The kingdom age covenant has been given to all flesh. She says, I forgive your iniquity, I shall remember it no more to the pit with Satan. But that's in lots of my other videos. For now, it should suffice enough to know that it shall come to pass that earth's encouraged people shall, shall shake off the th thickness of all gross darkness. And once again, they'll be able to recognize true heaven-sent uh, messengers of the Lord through discernment, ones like me, whether they live within Israel or among any other nations of our sh ever shrinking globe shrinking shrinking even though there's more of us almost 8 billion it's a shrinking globe because people just get on Skype and talk to each other the COVID thing hasn't uh, interfered with their lives much because at least they can still see each other face to face and everyone who becomes willing to let the, the, uh, the Lord their God speak forth new words of love's inspiration unto their hearts shall find that such submission unto his most hallowed will shall swiftly cause their souls to be set aflame increasingly, whether he speaks much or little, clearly or within the darkest speech of mysterious dreams and visions. But he is calling on people to come into the presence of love just through this message. For according to the needs of Yahweh's faithful few, they shall... They shall come to realize that there's so much beauty in our, our beloved. And there's been such a waste of time arguing with one another. It's, it's time for a, a, a new day. And according to the needs of Yahweh's faithful few, they'll receive generously from him according to their own heart's fitness to hear and understand his word in this generation. Divine words from heaven now re resound again. These are the days of Matthew 17, 11. Surely Elijah shall restore all things, and that is what I am endeavoring to do, if anyone will stop ignoring me. Know well, O people of the only true Lord of evermore, that he still lovingly says, When Israel was a child, I loved him. From Egypt did I call my son. And at Sinai, face to face, did the Lord speak with those who held unshakable faith within his justice. But from the time when the children of Israel first accepted the Torah, with the words, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do and we will hear. That's what they said. And then they became a fully developed nation under his sight because they were obedient unto his gentle voice of love. It is time for the obedience of Malachi 4.6. For unless everybody loves everybody and the hearts of the children turn to the father, fathers for the children, this earth will be toast, burnt, crispy, 
six billion people will die according to the three um, evil horsemen of Revelation 6 that ride the pale horseman rides bringing death and morgue official the lawless one that would die by a sword in Revelation 13 13 won't have nothing to do with that nor will he ever ascend <laughs> because God is averting this future and God says that unless this age the last age of grace was cut short no flesh could survive no way to cut the last age uh, short except by starting the new one which he's done by having the message the kingdom age message given to all flesh so he can pour out his love upon all people because he loves every single one as though they were the only one and all people with their heart on fire with love are good in his sight and walk after the spirit and there is no condemnation upon anyone that loves the alive but the rebuke of rebellion would become private. And then Adonai said unto himself, It is not seemly for my children that I should speak to them and correct them in public, or when I have uh, hard words to say to them that all the world should hear. But let them ready me a tabernacle. And he says this of their third temple. This is prophecy. Because Malachi says he shall return to his temple. And this is how it shall be. And he says, ready me now the tabernacle. And when I have to speak unto them, I will speak from that tabernacle. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel. The Lion of Judah roars that the tabernacle shall now arise. And the branch of God shall have a lot to do with that happening. Is, uh, just Google images of uh, the third uh, temple of San coin. His picture, the branch of God. Uh, he's a real estate guy. And, and, and. So, in the roaring lion of Zion says, Arise now, O temple, for he speaks it into existence once again, saying, Come forth now. Now shall the temple arise. And when he says now, that means pretty soon. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. So it's time to have joy to all the ancient people of El Shaddai, who is still singing over all of them in silence. In thy bonds shall he come forth to, to sever and break asunder with the kingdom age new covenant. As he says to all people, keep their love light on. You are free. For it shall now be done since the Lord has already found victory in his spirit realm. So uh, after Satan has uh, been defeated and banished, now let every demon, leaderless demon, run. For the children of Abraham will now soon be free forever because God breaks free. If you read Jeremiah 31, for the latter days, the promise was for Israel and all mankind, Jeremiah 32, 27, that God would give this covenant of his word for the kingdom age and it was a latter-day pro promise it says so jeremiah 30 24 and 31 1 jeremiah and he says i shall return my terrifying anger and stop the fast rising great tribulation if people of earth will start giving me what i want for them to love let loose your love and your love will save the day his love reflected through them so it's time for a gospel about fearing God, God's lack of uh, not having his love. I can't even imagine eternity, just nothingness, no love. The people of God should only fear him alone, not bearing any ill will. And when I say fear him, there's nothing to fear about love. <laughs> that would be ridiculous. He is love. Those who love are born of God and know God because God is love and born again has always just been to flame on, become as a little child again. Uh, the definition has always been wrong. Desolate heritage is uh, uh, that Isaiah predicted, Isaiah 49, 8, totally true. But it's time to fear not obeying his voice because in not fearing him, our love starts dying and then we bring judgment upon ourselves. We can perish. There is an unforgivable sin. If we let our love wax totally cold, 
then we've committed the unforgivable sin and we have no light for our next body. He brings no judgment upon us. This is the revealed mystery of Revelation 10, 7 that comes forth in the latter days. First was last, last was first. The seven trumpet sounded first because it was last, the perfect trumpet. And when that happened, instantaneously all the kingdoms of earth became the Lord's because they were always his. That's why in John 10, 16, Jesus said in the latter days he would arise as the word of God, the good shepherd over all the different flocks of earth, not just the Hebrew people. And then he said that uh, there would only be the one oneness, one God over all people, love. And uh, but one, one thing for, uh, for sure, the people of God should, I'm going to repeat this, should only fear him alone, not bearing any ill will towards anyone. And by such practices may the elect conquer untruth by truth, since they'll only find suffering by resisting falseness. Therefore, peacefulness now goes hand in hand with love, and peace that has come out of love's brightest fire that burns with love, his glory shall be poured over all of us. For it's the furnace of the great tribulation and much discomfort that perfects one's dreams and envision hopes as their love, faith, and their peace prosper as never before. This is what God is sending us for the kingdom aid so that we can arise. And he said, unless this happened in the latter days and the next day started early, Matthew 24, 22, that nothing, no men could be saved. Intellectually, the kingdom age is now. The kingdom of God is within. And according to Hebrews 8, all religion is now obsolete, according to Hebrews 8, uh, the prophecy of Paul. A carnal man's love is not always nice. And love is not always patient. Nor is it always kind. For some sin, while while being angry, and thereby do they throw away any peace they might have had. So, beloved brethren, I say unto you, and even the Lord says unto you, uh, to love. But uh, the Lord doesn't say this, I say this, that truest peace only shows itself in the midst of problems, in the middle of chaos. And it's true peace shows itself strongest when people are at their weakest since the Lord is their living confidence who easily brings forth strength out of weakness, riches out of poverty, gladness out of sadness, and vibrant colors out of black and white. Wake up. It's time to arise in love. Unity of man. The one world religion of, of God's love for all. Know also that peace shall always be out of the reach for all those undisciplined in the godly ways of love and you can't have love without total forgiveness that is part of the secret of the mystery of God revealed in this generation as a result every darkened spirit soul shall not see the shadow of quietude in their constant screaming thoughts if they allow their most carnal kind of love to exist amidst their unbounded self-seeking pride that enjoys keeping records of wrongs let go of that quit keeping records of who owes you what. Such misguided souls continually delight in evil as they foolishly turn their backs upon he that's always been the truest, truest truth unto everyone who believes in love. And for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten love so that whosoever believeth in love should not perish, but have everlasting love and everlasting life. Thus saith the Lord God. Things have been twisted, people. Early Christian fathers said, We are Israel. This kingdom age covenant out of place. We're building our religion upon it, and it is complete. It was, uh, they said that it was uh, totally fulfilled. And they ignored that it was the latter days and they ignored God knew who he was addressing. Israel and all mankind people. It's a promise of his love. And it, 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 it proves the total equality of all people of love, regardless of what they are or who they are or what they believe. It, it covers the alcoholic like me, the homosexual, the atheist, people like more official. <laughs> God loves everyone. So keep the light love on and you're going to be good because his love will overflow. Read Isaiah 49. This is my message. 
Isaiah 49. I am the servant of the Lord that wasted all my time writing many years, 200 books that nobody ever wanted to read. Isaiah 49, 4 said so. Yep, all the time, wasted in vain. In 2,000 years, people thought that was Jesus. He didn't waste no time. Even in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he prayed for our oneness, he knew he was going to give us our oneness through this recognized, restored, kingdom age, new covenant that Peter said in Acts 3, 21, had to come first because otherwise Jesus would be kept in reserve in heaven. Don't you want him to come back? If you do, you better start listening to this old preacher. Because no one would ever let me talk in any church or synagogue or temple. Because I preach truth that doesn't divide mankind. It brings everyone together under one loving God. The brotherhood of man can arise. The gross darkness of Isaiah 60 is now shattered by the sun of love arising with healing in his wings. Do you want healing people? Deceived souls are many, and, and such deceived souls are never fully protected by love since they never fully trust in him as their Lord of trustfulness. At the same time, bankrupted souls of depression and doubt seldom hope in anything worthwhile. They, they lose vision. The Bible says, he who lacks vision uh, <laughs> perishes physically, early. One die young, just have no goals. No aspirations, no hopes, no dreams. You just become a big couch potato and you grow roots and you die. Don't do it. Don't be a potato. I'm going to repeat this last sentence. Such bankrupt souls of depression and doubt seldom hope in anything worthwhile which causes them to fail and to fall away to the back of the pack who is either running life's race uh, eagerly by dragging their feet way behind them or they got their thumb up some place that we shouldn't talk about. May the Lord's face therefore shine upon all those continually rejecting everything not productive. Uh, such as uh, the ignorance of not caring about important things. It's time that we start having enlightenment of love. It's written that the Lord puts the righteous to trials, but his soul hates the wickedness of the wicked and the vile ways of any lover of violence. He hates it, and yet he also loves them too, as if they were his only creation. Know ye not, O people of Jehovah, that as the... And by the way, he is Adonai, he is Elohim, he is Allah, he is Isaiah, he is Yeshua, he is Jesus. He does not care what you call him. He is love. And those who love are born of God and know God because God is love. First John 4, 7. And that verse is the reason it is foretold that the everlasting gospel has to go again to all people, to all nations, to all tribes because John the Beloved's words are foretold to have to go again. Not my word, that verse. 1 John 4, 7, those who love are born again because most Christians don't believe it. Hindus don't love. Islamics don't love. Atheists, they don't love. Ooh, he's a, ooh, he's a that. They don't love. They don't know God. Those who believe need no evidence. Those who don't want to want to believe, all the evidence in the world could not convince them of nothing. <laughs> Pharisees. Know ye not, and I am Elijah. Know ye not, O people of the Lord, Jehovah Nisi, the banner of love over all of us. Know ye not that as the potter of souls, our creator king doesn't bother to try the vessels that have come forth imperfectly. For he knows that if he strikes them even once, it will break them. But he does try the vessels that look perfected so they won't be broken no matter how much shock and trauma they might receive. People have to come out of life's fires. And what don't kill you can make you stronger or it can make you almost dead. And so it is that all men come forth out of his fire of life and those he tries are like some glass decanter because he himself 
blows his own breath into them by love when they come unto him desiring his empowerment of love so that they're born again with their love light on. Should such an enlightened one become damaged, the Lord knows it can be repaired since it came forth with his breath that strengthens every ounce of their being. Unfortunately, though, imperfect uh, vessels are merely like clay jars that have received no breath from him. These are the ones committing the unforgivable sin. And if they break, that's it for them. Can't be reblown. A clay jar is a clay jar. And they would perish exactly as it is foretold. Wisdom goes before our Most High. And, and God does not try the wicked people. <laughs> but, the but the righteous judgment starts in the house of God. And their trials serve to show the, their virtue to the world. In that way, the Lord also tried Father Abraham. Therefore, let the house of Zion now come to see that such movement of the Lord's hand can also be compared to the workings of the weaver of a fabric. For the more he strikes it and cuts at it, the more it is praised, and the more does it acquire a good name its work. Our Lord knows what he's doing, and all things work together for good. Accordingly, when he knows that the fabric is bad, he does not dare to cut at it even once for fear of tearing it. In the same way, our Holy One, blessed be he, doesn't have to give the wicked any heaven-sent trials, since their hell hellish lives fall under the residue, the echo of Satan's uncaring care. And thank God he's been removed as per the promise of Daniel 12, because he can never be the accuser of the brethren. He's been fired because the kingdom age covenant has been given. And because God says, I forgive your iniquity and I will never remember it anymore. Jeremiah 31, verse 33 to 35. If God sent one person with their love light on unto hell, he would be a liar. Now can 1,000 years of peace begin because God says, and now no one else needs to be taught in me anymore. The least shall know him, from the, the least to the greatest, and everyone in between. Even if there are people who are like fish, like Morg, who says he doesn't believe in a God or know a God, but it don't matter, because the truth is, fish swim in water. They might not know they're in water, but the, it gives them life anyways. But if they jump out of the water, they're going to find out, oh, I better get back in that water. And, you know, it's the same thing with love. It's the same thing. Because love sustains every one of us, whether we recognize him as love or not. And those who love are born of God and know God because God is love. And that totally transcends every religion. And Hebrews 8 has come to pass the obsolete nature of all religion. Now that it is totally recognized that God's love has transcended all belief. Belief or no unbelief. Only love has been all in all. And you know, he originally spoke his own light into existence and now it comes to us to reflect back. So behold the wisdom of a farmer who has two heifers one that is healthy and one that the other is weak. Which one of them will he put on the yoke? Will he not put it on the healthy one that's strong? So he's going to try the church and one will be left, one will be taken. taken. And the literal message of the literal kingdom age new covenant of Jeremiah 110, he, God told Jeremiah, Jeremiah, your word's going to tear down all the kingdoms of men. Haggai 2, 2 said the same thing. And then it was put as a latter-day covenant in Jeremiah 31. But then, uh, well, it got switched. Oh, we are Israel, early Christian father says. And the prophecy is fulfilled. They ignored the latter day. But it was always correctly addressed to all mankind, Israel and all mankind. And from Israel, the salvation of the Lord flows exactly as Isaiah 49, 8. Or exactly as the whole chapter 49 foretells and it, it, it straightens out one thing we do not have to believe suddenly in something or someone or, or God in order to be saved 
it is our inheritance that we've always had as long as we keep our love light on. This is the restoration of Acts 321, an understanding of that. And once people realize he's God, he's love over us, then it really doesn't matter what we know about him. As it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end right now. And foremost, the Lord's most blessed name is love. Blessed are they hugging this gospel, this gospel's great news throughout all of my videos. As tightly as squirming babies need to be held, blessed are those who will grasp onto the inspiration that the Lord breathed upon me. For they shall discover that neither sickness unto death or life unto health can separate them from our living love who is shining evermore in the glorious of the splendor of his own majesty. And he is the majesty of majesties. And only this good news alone of Daniel Owsley's videos will help keep man from focusing on their own goodness that's like filthy rags and Adonai then will help them to see that every bad soul can become good with repentance just as good ones can become even better by his holy influences of Allah whom he is Allah Adonai Elohim the carpenter of the ages it does not matter what you want to call him he is love there's never been a false God just a, a false understanding of his love God is one and it doesn't matter if people want to believe in Jesus was divine or not according to his word with no additions and valid but you gotta believe that was purposely Nothing was put there. Mankind put that there. But you got to believe in order to have all the promises of the new covenant, which is always the kingdom age covenant out of the spot. Wild days, wild days. But now it's restoration time, and what restoration time will bring is days of refreshing. Days burning as an oven for the rebellious, for the the religious as they fight against losing their religion that has been a waste of time all except love and charity that's god wants to stand in all religions all religions are good the love part show a little love that's what it's all about people and it doesn't matter whether someone is the very worst sinner or the best of saints because he loves all people equally now it matters to their own lives, to their own happiness. So yes, it matters. I'm not saying otherwise. But in the long run, his love transcends whatever they are. As long as they keep their light of love on and endure to the end. This is the uh, revealed mystery of the Bible. And history shall prove that uh, the days of Hebrew 8 are upon us. The kingdom age intellectually must begin exactly as Jesus said in uh, Matthew 24, 22, or else the kingdom age could never begin. It must begin with our mind and our heart. And because I'm talking the manifestation of Jesus coming on a cloud, this is the kingdom of age coming with his word given as being literal, as it's always secretly bent and all bent out of whack. And uh, so it's time that our Lord God wants to teach that the remedy for curing one's wretched desires doesn't lie in satisfying them, but in extinguishing them totally. But praise ye the Lord of all truth, for as his desires for some flames to be distinguished, extinguished, he desires others to be inflamed like a roaring fire, because life for his beloved is like a steep road. And the harder we work, the more satisfying it gets to us. No pain, no gain. So it's time for everybody to put on a nice hat like mine and put on their halos because we have some work to do to save this world with love. Vipers and briars tear and bite on that steep road's bristling path. To be alone on that kind of a road without God would be to perish. Therefore, God created friendship between like-minded souls for this journey with two strength and courage always grows 
even a hero has some great moments of weakness. If he is alone, on, on what would he support himself? Would he support himself on the briars? What would he grab? Would he grab a hold of the vipers to give him help? Where would he lie down? In the swirling torrent or in the horrible darkness, where could he find rest from his aloneness and his loneliness? And how could he rest? For so it is that everywhere one like that would look, he would find a new wound and some new threatening peril. But thanks be to our Father God of love that all men should find a friend so that their breast would be a support, their arm a prop, and their affection a God-sent refuge. Thus a befriended hero may recover his strength, and the traveler once again can journey on being secure having had friendship and it's time for the brotherhood of man to arise so i urge you to start making friends with people of all different religions totally ignoring that it's no importance what they believe come let us go up to the mountain of the lord and we may walk the paths that most that the, our most high adonai has set and we shall beat our swords into plowshares exactly as Isaiah 2 foretold for the latter days, no matter what translation you look, and will beat our spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore, and none shall be afraid, for the word of the Lord has spoken. And with that, many and uh, Many have really enjoyed this, and the story time was fun. I hope you come back for the next story time. We're going to have one more nice reading. Yay! Yay! So, bye. Say bye-bye, Minnie. Bye-bye. And one of these days, I'm going to have my puppet show. <laughs> Blessings. Love it. And be safe.